Hello everybody, this is Pretty from It's a Pretty Chat. Welcome to my channel. My guest today is just an amazing, amazing person, such a vibrant personality. I have not too many, I don't, I really don't have many words in my vocabulary to describe her. She's such an amazing person. She used to be a cheerleader when she was in school, but I believe, I, I still think she's a cheerleader even now. She is constantly um, cheering people to do their best and she's always, always there with beautiful encouraging words each time and she, is, she she worked as a teacher and now she is in the paper crafting industry and I, I really don't want to I don't really know what else to say because there's so much that she has to share so without much wait please welcome Susan Appel. Hi Susan I am so happy that you are here with me on It's a Pretty Chat. Welcome, welcome, welcome. I'm super excited to talk to you, to chat with you, to hear you, and just you sharing your heart with us. So really welcome. I've been excited to do this and I'm so glad we finally got the chance and I'm looking forward to sharing all that you wanna know. Well, <laughs> as, much as, as much as I feel like I want you to know. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm sure viewers out there who are watching us and who are listening to us on the podcast are eager to hear from Susan as much as I am. Um, Susan, before we can jump into the art world and the crafting world, tell us a little about yourself. Well, I think probably one of the biggest things about me is that I didn't start in this industry. I guess nobody really did. You always had something before that. And so um, I was for 16 and a half years a teacher. I taught um, English, I got a degree in English, and I taught English, I taught um, like all the vocabulary and grammar and reading and um, literature. I taught grades basically as low as fifth grade all the way up to seniors in high school. Mm -hmm. um, I also did teach art, but that was kind of interesting because um, I wasn't trained in art. I didn't take any art classes in high school or even any in college. Wait, I did take one in college, but I was never trained in art. But I got a teaching job where I was teaching uh, mostly seventh and eighth grade English. And so then they were like, okay, in addition to English, we want you to teach either PE, computers, or art. Well, PE was a no. I mean, like I was a cheerleader, but not, not so into PE. At that point, I knew close to nothing about computers. It was about the mid nineties. And so I was like, art, it is. What was awesome was I was really not um, given any parameters about what sort of art I was supposed to teach. So I really made all my own decisions. Um, I had been crafty all my life. My parents are both very creative. My mom always made everything super fun and colorful. Oh, we didn't have a lot of money growing up, but my mom really just made everything special in any way she could that didn't have to cost money. Um, my dad was also creative. Um, going back to the education thing, he was my seventh and eighth grade teacher, mm -hmm. as well as my, high, uh, as my principal in seventh and eighth grade. And he taught everything. So he taught art and he actually has done like needlework and that kind of thing. So really, honestly, the, the education background and parents who were creative as well, that really has kind of formed me into who I am. Wow, that's amazing. I mean, um, it, as you said, everybody starts uh, 
not there, there are a few people who who have art as their background and they develop it right but for mm -hmm. most of us at least what i have seen in the card making industry many of us have come out of something totally different like for you from teacher and even art just happened to come on your lap you really didn't intend to be an art right. teacher right it was just right it just so happened so then you, said you did nine years of artwork art teaching and then you went back teaching english for many many years and right. that's that's till you till you quit teaching and then you went into something else what at what point did you stop teaching okay that's a really good story so um, um, I was teaching at a public high school in Fort Wayne, Indiana in 2008. I had started there in 2004 and I, I was the type of teacher that I gave a hundred percent. Um, I really wanted to, um, impact lives and I really enjoyed teaching English. I had always been an avid reader and I, I loved giving that to my students. Um, but it got to the point where I didn't love it anymore. And when you don't love it, mm -hmm. that is when you need to start reassessing. So, um, I started to think, you know, I, I have other talents. I'm smart. I write well. I'm enthusiastic. What if I did something different? Mm -hmm. Now, my sister and I, were teaching together at that time and she was kind of feeling the same way. So long story short, we both applied for jobs at magazines located in Utah. And we at that point lived in Fort Wayne, Indiana. And so we both applied for jobs in Utah and it was two different magazines, but in the same building. Um, I applied to Paper Crafts Magazine. And when I got the, the information about what the job entailed, I was just like, yes, 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 all of that. Yes, that sounds fantastic. And so I actually had a video interview um, in my craft room in Fort Wayne, Indiana. And I talked to the people in Utah and they said, we'll call you like in three days. They called me like later that day. Yeah. And I got the job, my sister and I both got jobs. And so um, that was kind of the beginning of getting into the industry as my job, not my hobby. Sure. Um, so what happened in 2008 then was we had to tell the principal that we were leaving at the end of the year, we finished out teaching that at the end of that year in 2008. Um, two days after graduation, or actually the day after graduation, we, we got in our cars and we headed out here to Utah. And then one week later, I think it was one week later, I started as associate creative editor at Paper Crafts Magazine. Okay. So, that's what happened. I, I just kind of said, I don't want to be a teacher anymore. I'm not serving the students as well as I possibly can. So I, I want to do something different. And what a dream. And it was scary as heck. I'm sure. I'm sure. Yes. But then you took it. So uh, how did you navigate all this? Like, did you have going through this path from teacher to art teacher, again to teacher, and now to paper crafting world, was it all a smooth road all along? Or did you have bumps and failures and successes? How was it? How did you navigate it all? Um, I felt like, honestly, everything worked out exactly the way it should have. And I always say that it was God's plan from beginning to end. I always trust in him because he's has never failed me yet and i feel like every situation i've been in i mean i teaching was great but then moving from teaching into working for paper crafts magazine was fantastic i never regretted a second of doing that it was scary but i was just like i feel good about this decision 
and every decision since then has been exactly what it should have been. Awesome. There but, were bumps, but yeah. You know. but, but I, when I'm listening to you, I also hear that you were not scared of taking risks. Like when you quit your job as a teacher, did when you quit, did you? Did you have a plan completely set in your mind that this is what I'm going to do? This is how it's going to head? Or was it like, no, I'm done with this and it's a new journey I'm going to start. So I'm going to take a risk there. Is, is that something that, that sounds right? Did you take some, did you take calculated risks or was it, I'm just going to do it? Okay. I have to tell you that I would say I'm not a huge risk taker. <laughs> um, I am the baby of the family, and so I'm kind of like, you guys tell me what to do and whatever. But um, I was willing to take this risk because I knew it was right for me. Yeah. I do feel like, though, it wasn't particularly calculated. I didn't know what was going to happen. I knew, I, you know, I go and I take this job as associate creative editor, and I hadn't really even thought about like any sort of ladder climbing or anything. I was just like, this is so cool and I'm having so much fun and I'm meeting all these people. Um, and then I became the creative editor of the magazine once the previous creative editor, um, she moved away and started Moxie Fab World. People, some people might remember Kath Edfelson. So I took over for her. And do you remember how I said that I, when I started, the building had probably over a hundred people. Yes. Okay. When I, when the Paper Crafts magazine shut down, there were 17 people oh. in the building. Oh. So, I mean, it was, it was interesting. It was a hard time in the industry. Um, magazines were obviously struggling. So, um, it was totally risky, I gotta tell you, because um, when I started in 2008, I think it was probably three or four months later, Digital Scrapbooking Magazine went under, and then not far after that, Simple Scrapbooks went under, and I was like, what have I done? I quit a career that I could have probably gone on and on in, Sure. to work for a magazine so it it was risky but I didn't really know where I was going with it and then now of course paper craft magazine is done with what you are still working with the magazine aren't you aren't you an editor chief for uh yes which, what are you what uh, which magazine okay. um I work for two companies so the magazine I work for is Scrapbook and Cards Today magazine. I'm the editor-in-chief, and it is based in Toronto, Ontario, oh, okay. but I live in Utah. Sure. Um, one of the things about Scrapbook and Cards Today, that okay, first of all, it's four times a year. Mm -hmm. So when I was working for Paper Crafts, it was like every month. Sure. So it's four times a year. That, that doesn't take up all of my time. Um, I will say that Scrapbook and Cards today, I can't see it going anywhere at this point because it's modeled in a, a very different way than the other crafting magazines. Yeah. So the way that it, it works is different. And so it's a very strong and incredibly inspiring uh, magazine to write for. Yeah. Some incredible heavy hitters in the industry are a part of that. Um, like I said, Kathy Zilski, I talked about her earlier that I was a fangirl. Well, now I work with her. She's the art director for Scrapbook and Cards Today magazine. Mm -hmm. And um, Paige Evans, who designs for Pink Paisley, she's on our team. And we, we have very strong um, scrapbookers and card makers. And I feel like a lot of people are like, oh, I've never heard of this magazine, but it's amazing. And it is online for free, scrapbookandcards.com, Scrapbook and Cards Today magazine. So for all the viewers listen, uh, watching us and for podcast listeners, if you have never heard about scrapbookingcards.com, uh, that is a wonderful thing that you should look up. I, In fact, I, Susan, was not aware of that magazine for a long time. It's only when I looked up your 
profile is that's when I came to know about that magazine and I started looking at it and it, it looks quite amazing. All the it beautiful is. things, uh, all the beautiful things that they have out there. And, the, and, the, and I also realized there are quite a few artists in the industry today who have come out of, of this, like many of them are noted by, for their work from the magazine itself. Oh, it? sure. Mm -hmm. Is that something that you would tell viewers out there and listeners that is that some place that people can try to put their artwork in to be noticed? Yes, actually, we have uh, for each issue, we have a call for submissions. And I was actually working today on the call for submission. So I would love, love to see people who have, are watching this. Um, to submit to our summer call. We should have that up on the website soon. Sure. Um, I think it's like, well, anybody can contact me, but I, it's scrapbookingcardstoday.com slash online dash call, I believe. So that, that would be a place where you can submit your work. Sure. And then um, one of my favorite things is sending those emails to people to say, hey, we loved your your card or your layout and we're going to publish it in our magazine. So I've yeah. gained a lot of friendship and happiness from that. So yeah. very cool thing to do. Awesome. For all the listeners and viewers out there, I will have the links to all the places that Susan just mentioned in the description box below. So please make sure that you hit there and awesome. get all the details from that. And I'm sure there are many of there, many of you out there who can seize this opportunity uh, really well. Thank you. Thank you so much, Susan, for- I dare mentioning. you to do it. <laughs> there <Yes>. you go. <laughs> Thank you for mentioning that. Susan, uh, a question related to again the same paper crafting world and stuff like that have you ever thought if that paper magazine had not called you if that position wouldn't have come what would you have done if not for paper crafting mm, I believe that I would be a, a personal like organizer um, I, my mom used to call me relentless because I would get into closets and I'd be like, you don't need this anymore. And that's junk. And why is this not organized? And so I, I love organizing things. Um, many people who do know me already probably know that my entire closet is uh, rainbow order, which is not necessarily a strange thing. A lot of people do that. They have their clothes in rainbow order. But for my closet, the hangers match the clothes. So if it's a blue shirt, it's on a blue hanger. If it's a green shirt, it's on a green hanger. If it's a yellow shirt, you get me. Yeah, it is glorious. Yeah. And so I love that. Um, and I'm all about logical use of space. So I, I definitely think that I would have been like a a closet organizer or some side of, sort of an organizing fiend. It makes me happy. But here's the thing. I'm sure you could still use that as a career for yourself. There are so many card makers and crafters who would love to have a person like you who can help them to organize their craft room, starting from me. My craft room is a disaster. Is there, I mean, is there something that you can tell our viewers and our listeners, like maybe three or four pointers about, because you have this organizing mindset, what are some things that they can do to kind of do the basic organizing, which is important in organizing? Is there something that you can share? Oh, sure. Okay. One of my things that I always tell people is, think about the things that you use the most and you want to have those very close at hand. So um, if you have a tall cabinet, they should be like right at, you know, like chest height because you want to be able to grab that easily. Um, so that's one of my things. If it's something you use a lot, have it very conveniently located. Mm -hmm. um, I also am huge about labeling. So label every little area. I, I'm actually sitting in my craft room right now and that actually could use some work in some cases because I've been switching things up occasionally, but 
labeling stuff is really important. And then my other thing is use the wall space. Mm -hmm. I think that sometimes people try to put things over a flat space, but if you use the wall, you've got all that space. So like I have a pegboard that's on the side of a bookcase. Mm -hmm. So I'm using the bookcase height. Yeah. I've got stuff that goes all the way to the ceiling. So um, I've had tiny, tiny craft rooms. I now have a nice space in the basement so I can spread out more, but I would say those are my three. Keep things handy that are used a lot, mm -hmm. label everything and use the height of your room. Those are all really good ideas. I should take some too. So for all of you <laughs> listening there, those are good pointers. And maybe it's time for you to start looking at your art room in a totally different way, right? Yes. Yeah. Um, Susan, I, I just want to know, I know you told earlier that your mom and dad are creative and I'm guessing they are, they are a big influence in your life. Are there other people who influenced you and how did they influence you to be who you are? Okay, um, I would also say that another really big influence was my siblings. Mm -hmm. um, I have two brothers, and then I've talked about my sister, who she lives with me. Um, she was an art minor in college, and she taught art for many years. And so I think always, I, I'm 10 years younger than she is, and I think as the little sister, I always wanted to kind of be like her and all of that type of thing sure. but um so she's really good at drawing and painting and that type of thing um she works in a very corporate job now mm -hmm. and I work in this very creative job and I have to sometimes push her to use that creative side of her brain um but that that's definitely one influence as my sister um in the crafting world, I would say I have so many influences. Like I said, Kathy Zilski, my gosh, she's gonna want to hunt me down and kill me because I keep mentioning how awesome <laughs> she is, but she is. Um, and she is as genuinely awesome in person as she seems like online. I'm hoping um, you can have her here. <laughs> yes, she's so good. Sure. Um, I also am really impressed by my two bosses, Catherine Tatchgen from Scrapbook and Cards Today magazine and Heidi Kroll from Simon Says Stamp because both of them had this passion and this dream to do something. And I mean, they start had humble beginnings. Um, Heidi talks about starting at a little table in her kitchen, you know, putting little bits of ribbon together to sell. Mm -hmm. And um, Catherine talks about the first time she ever had the idea and she went to a trade show and how she just wanted to throw up just with the idea that she was gonna do this scary thing. So those two ladies really inspire me with their drive and their passion and their kindness they're both super amazing people and I'm so fortunate to work with them. Sure. So I'm very inspired by them. And then I think probably design wise, gosh, there's so many, but I, I would have to say probably my top two, um, Yana Smukula. Sure. Every card she makes is so elegant and so bold yeah. and so perfect. Mm -hmm. And she is a lovely human being. And I just love her whole aesthetic and her. And then my second is Laura Basson because rainbows, <laughs> you know, <laughs> she's just like so so inspiring and cool and down to earth and oh. um actually fun fact the last year of um paper crafts magazine we had this uh contest called gallery idol mm -hmm. and she was one of the top 20 laura bassin was and i can still remember her card and nobody 
nobody had ever really heard of her before. Mm -hmm. And so I kind of feel like I got in on the Lord Aslan train from the beginning. And it's been so cool to see her just like be such a super rock star. Awesome. Awesome. Mm -hmm. That's the, I, I love the way you broke it down, like your personal life to the design aspect from your work aspect, influences in all the places. And, and that is something that we all need to, I mean, it, it's a good, good thing to recognize influences, not only just in our art world, but also right. in our, in our personal life, in, in different areas of our life, so many people influence and giving them that credit is, is, is one of the best things that we can do. So thank you so much for bringing up so many people and sharing your heart about that. Mm -hmm. Susan, I have just one, one question is that you work for an industry like a paper crafting industry and you work for magazine and you're also a social coordinator for um, Simon Says Stamp. What do you do for Simon? What does, what does a social coordinator's job? I'm so glad you asked me that because I was like, I need to make sure that I talk about Simon. <laughs> um, so Simon, my official title is Social Engagement Coordinator, sure. which is kind of a made up thing. But actually, as I've looked around, it, it really isn't because I think on LinkedIn, it actually allowed me to choose that. So um, the Social Engagement Coordinator, I think um, one of it, how do I even mention it all? Okay, first of all, let's say this. I am in charge of Instagram. Hmm. So pretty much 97% of the time that you see a post on Instagram, I have posted that. Okay. Posted it, reposted it. I write the stuff that's in it. Uh, so that's me. Also, um, I go through every weekday hashtag simon says stamp dot com and sssck for the card kits mm -hmm. as well and i comment and like all sorts of you know i go through all of that comment and like that i also then take things that i find on instagram and i put them into we have on the um blog galleries for all of the different releases Sure. So if you made something from the, like the Hey Bestie release, mm -hmm. it gets put in the gallery. That's me too. Um, also, I gather images. So if there's any Simon brand um, product on the website, for example, um, there was recently that botanical heart stamp set with the big mm -hmm. heart with flowers in it. Mm -hmm. um, people will send me images of their card using that. Mm -hmm. And then I put that on the website and add links so that people can see more about it. I also add video links on the website. A um, Couple more things and then I'll quit boring you. Um, I am in charge of the blog hops. And oh, so, so I contact the people and say, would you like to be in our blog hop, I send them the information, I write the, um, the actual hop blog posts for the blog hops, I choose the winners. So I do a lot of stuff with the blog hops. And then one of my favorite things that I do is I work with all the different, the, we call it our Simon Designer family. Mm -hmm. We have a Facebook group. And so I keep all the different people, um, A, informed about what's going on. Sure. And B, I try to build community in that group. And that's been really fun to get to know people on, you know, kind of more casual social level. Absolutely. And I, I really enjoy doing that. So um, all of that, what I do for the magazine and what I do for Simon is all done from a little corner in my living room. <laughs> so yeah, it's, it's pretty awesome to be able to do that. Uh, as we wrap up, I, the only, the one question I have playing in my mind is you have, you work for paper crafting, um, you work for a magazine where you're choosing cards uh, to be put on the magazine front. You work for a Simon Says Stamp as a social coordinator. You're looking at Instagram all the time, scanning through different cards, different people posting. 
what do you see that makes a card stand out which says okay this is what stands out and this needs the shot shout out what so what do you see to bring that card out and say hey yes this card needs a shout out um well okay a card that needs a shout out is a card to me that's clever that um in a lot of cases they've used the product in a way that you're like, wow, why did I never think of that? And that's one of the things that definitely catches my eye if it's clever. If it's something that you're like, why didn't I think of that? That's amazing. So that's definitely one thing when it's a clever use of the product, a way that you didn't think the product would be used. Um, I, I gotta tell you, I'm just off the head, off of my head here thinking about, um, Daniel West, I maybe you've heard of him. He's yeah. Del and Artie on Instagram. Mm -hmm. uh, the first time I noticed him, we, Simon had our September 2018 card kit was the Mermaids. Mm -hmm. And he did some of the cl most clever and hilarious things with that mermaid. One thing he did with the mermaid was he made her into a zombie mm -hmm. and she was like bleeding hilarious so, um I, I didn't share that one though um another one he did, I did was see it, though he had put it yes. on instagram though yeah it was cool yeah. um he used a mermaid as the prow of a ship sure which was really cool and then he also used that mermaid in a starbucks um kind of look-alike type of thing yeah. their logo mm -hmm. so that was just really clever to me and I, I really appreciate that so that's one thing i definitely am noticing um another thing that i tend to notice is incredible craftsmanship you know you look at debbie hughes creating a plaid by herself with watercolor mm -hmm. mind blown you know that's amazing so obviously incredible craftsmanship is something that is going to catch our eye um sure. and another thing that i wish more people would work on is good photography mm -hmm. it doesn't have to be like overly staged or anything like that but it needs to be clear yeah. so that it you can see it well i sometimes see a really cool card but the quality of the photo is such that I just don't feel comfortable sharing it. Sure. So I, you know, any time that people can, you know, work a little bit on those skills and it with, I, I honestly, when I take my pictures, I don't know, I know there are a lot of card makers who use a DSLR, but I use my iPhone. Sure. And then I, um, one thing I use a lot is the app called A Color Story. Mm -hmm. It's just a great way to brighten things up, cropping, that kind of thing. So I think those are some of the things I definitely look for. Clear, good photo, clever usage of the product, and the other thing I said, which I can't remember. Craftsmanship. Yes, craftsmanship. <laughs> Thank you. Yes, no, those are all really good points. So for all the listeners and uh, viewers out there, you know, if you are one of those people who are trying to, trying your best, creating your cards and, and trying to showcase it and, uh, and really wish that somebody noticed it, those are all really good points to keep in mind. Thank you so much, Susan, for joining us and for sharing your heart and for just, just, uh, just for this time that you could spend with me and with our viewers and our listeners. Uh, we, I really appreciate you and I want to thank you and all the best with everything that you are continuing to do and maybe choose to do later, eventually change something, right. you know, but whatever you do, all the best and uh, God bless you. Thank you so thank much. Thank you so much.